Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. I'm in Final Cut and I have another very basic auto sizing title style. So we're going to have a look at how to do this one in Motion 5. But what we're going to look at is why it's much better for you to use the sequence text behavior than to keyframe text. If you want to have titles that are user friendly and versatile and adaptable. So this title on the right is animated with keyframes for the text and the title on the left is animated using the sequence text behavior. So for the title on the right, let's see what happens when we add more text. Okay, auto sizing is working perfectly, but you see that the, the shape size has increased and that is also the mask area size as well. So at the beginning of the animation, we see the text too soon, it's being revealed because the mask has pushed into where the text is waiting and it's not going to leave the masked area properly on the way out either. So we keyframed and you cannot sensibly publish your keyframed parameters to Final Cut. It will just make a mess for the user of the template. So using sequence text behavior, the advantage is, as we can see, we have a publishable parameter that isn't going to make a mess for the editor when they use it. So if we add more text, we will get the same problem. Text is visible too soon and it won't clear the area properly. But the huge advantage is that sequence text behavior gives us that Pretty much it's the same as the keyframe parameter, but it is publishable because it's all wrapped up in that sequence text behavior. So I can come here, or the user of your template can come here and say, oh, got a problem here, no worries. I have this parameter here that's available for me to adjust. So the user of your template is not limited to how much text they can put in before they face a problem. The other little detail we will look at is how we have uh, the opacity of the shape published here. And even though the shape area is also the image mask source, for beginners out there we're going to look at how you can make sure your opacity is available to publish without wiping out anything that's within it. Okay, let's jump over to motion and see how this is done. I'm starting here in a new Final Cut Titles template and I already have my shape set up with the basic auto sizing features. So uh, if you remember from uh, basic title number one, we have the shape aligned to the text and linked to the size of the text. If you're not sure about this, go and check out uh, the first guide. There's a link in the description for you. So the first thing we want to do is make some changes to the shape. So we'll come to the size link and we're going to add 50 on the X offset and 25 on the Y to give us a bit of a buffer zone. Then we want to grab the shape and come to geometry. and add 30 for roundness. So the next thing we want to do is make our mask source for the text. If we're just animating in motion and not thinking about uh, Final Cut, then to make a quick mask source, I could just grab the text. I'll grab the text group and choose Add Image Mask. Then I'll drop in the base shape as the source and be sure to turn the base shape back on. So if I just turn off the align to behavior there, we can see that the shape is now masking out the text and revealing it to come in. And that works fine when we just think about animating in motion. But when we want the template to be used in Final Cut, we want to be able to uh, provide the user of the template with the opacity parameter for the shape. Uh, so if I was to come now to opacity and drop that down, you'll see it's going to wipe out the text as well because 
this shape is the source for the image mask. So what we want to do instead is make a duplicate of this shape to be the mask source. So let's duplicate the shape. I'm going to leave the align to behaviors uh, off to help performance. Let's rename this shape as mask and we will leave uh, this now this is a copy of the link so it's still linked to the title text and the align to behavior is still aligned to the title text we want to add two more links we're going to come to roundness and we're going to add parameter behavior link and dragon base as the source just going to name that as round and then we're going to come to properties to scale Select the X scale and add parameter behavior link and drag the basin as the source. And now we will drag the mask shape in as the source for the image mask. So because the mask is linked to the base shape, any changes we make to the base shape are going to come through to the mask as well. So the next step then is to animate the base shape. We have the base shape linked to the text for size, so we are not able to animate by width. It's locked up with that link, so we're going to come to properties and we're going to animate by X scale. So my playhead set to start. First of all, I'm just going to bring my playhead to 1 second and 15 frames. I'll come to my mark menu and choose mark play range out. Oh, this project's just 30 frames a second. Uh, so that's one and a half seconds there. And right, so we'll grab the base shape, uh, bring the playhead back to the start, set a keyframe on the X scale. And then bring the key, uh, bring the playhead to 20 frames, and set another keyframe on the X scale there. And we'll come back to the start, and we're going to drop X scale down to zero. Then we're going to grab this curve, and I'm going to right click, set to Bezier. I'll break the tangent on the handle, and we're going to drag that handle over. So you see the mask is following along with the base shape because of the links. So the next thing we want to do is animate our text. To animate the text we're going to use our sequence text behavior and I'm just going to turn the align to behaviors back on for now. Uh, so let's grab the text and come to behaviors, come to text animation and add uh, sequence text. So we want to come here and add format position and we're going to add uh, actually we want to trim this behavior out uh, to last 20 frames and we want that to start five frames after the the shape animation. So come to five frames in the playhead with the sequence text selected use I on your keyboard to trim it out and grab the text and trim that to five frames start as well. Then make sure the sequence text is selected again. Come to 25 frames and use O on your keyboard to trim the sequence text behavior out there. So our sequence text behavior lasts for 20 frames. So let's tell the text what to do. We added position, come to Y and let's set a value of minus 150 and you'll see a few things start to go uh, very strange now. Okay, so clearly we need to make some changes to correct this uh, weirdness. So first of all, we want to come to the size links and we want to change uh, this source frame mode from continuous to fixed for both of our size links and that will stop 
the size uh, reacting to the sequence. Okay, let's come to the align two behaviors and note that I have ignore sequencing turned on. So if I was to uncheck ignore sequencing for each behavior, we get weirdness again. So if you're going to use uh, auto sizing, then make sh and you're going to use uh, sequence text to animate your text. Make sure that you have ignore sequencing turned on. So let's make some changes to the sequence text. Um, for the style I have in mind, I want uh, the user of the template to be able to add multiple lines. I want the text to come in line by line. So I'll come to sequence text. We're going to animate by line. We're going to set quite a high spread at 20 because uh, with more and more lines added, uh, that's going to make the animation even smoother. And for speed, we are going to use decelerate for now. And uh, one of the hang-ups people might have about animating with uh, sequence text instead of keyframing is uh, the fact that you only have these speeds available and you can't adjust the curves the way you want them. But what we're going to look at later on is that we always have the custom speed feature available and if you have custom speed set on your sequence text you have all the options that you would have for keyframing anyway but we'll look at that later on so I'm using decelerate and I want to apply the speed once per object so that when there are many lines they all decelerate individually rather than as a group Okay, there we are. Let's do a quick check on the auto sizing. Yep, everything's working fine. And what we're going to do now is grab the sequence text behavior, grab this Y position value, and we're going to publish that. And this is the parameter we saw before. So the next thing we want to do from here is to animate everything out. I just reset the text so that we can animate out. I'm going to reset my play range and I'm going to turn off the align two behaviors while we do this. So first let's animate out the base shape. I'm going to grab the curves there and we want to come back 20 frames and I'm going to, well I copied the frames, we're going to set a keyframe here and command V to paste and then reverse. So let's do the sequence out next. I'm going to select the sequence text. I'm going to rename it as sequence in. And I'm going to duplicate that and rename it as sequence out. Then I'm going to come back five frames from here. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to use shift left bracket on my keyboard to move the sequence out to start from here. Which is five frames before the mask and the shape starts. So now we want to come to the inspector and we're going to change this option to two. We want direction to be backwards. Now, the editor might want to use multiple lines of text, so if we make sure the animation out is set to backwards, that means that the last line in is the first one out, and you don't get the lines at the top running over the other ones on the way out. It doesn't look so good. And we want the speed set to accelerate. 
Now you'll see the text jump back in for a frame there, so what we need to do is uh, at the frame where the text is all gone, grab the text and trim it out using O on your keyboard. So we're just about done. The next important step is that we want to grab, for the sequence out behavior, we want to grab this parameter here and we're going to choose link, drag in the text as the source and for source parameter choose behaviors, sequence in, format, position, Y. And the reason we do that is because if the user of the template is going to adjust uh, the start point for the animation in, then we want that to be the same point that the text animates out to as well. I'll just rename my link. And finally, we'll just turn the align to behaviors back on. So there we are, that is another uh, basic way to make an auto-adjusting title uh, and we looked at why it's better to use the sequence text behavior, much better to use sequence text than uh, keyframing, and also why we need to duplicate shapes and link them to make uh, image mask sources so that we, we can provide the opacity parameter to the user of the template. I hope that was helpful for you if you are starting out in motion and you want to make uh, templates for Final Cut. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for watching.